Welcome to Allotment Walkabout for April 2014. We've got asparagus, Stuart's purple. It's coming through now. There's two massive ones, two come through there this week. And if we go along the row, there's a couple more just popping up there. And actually from last week we've got quite a long spear there which we're tempted to pick today and put in a risotto but I think we just might leave it a couple of days more so that these other two that I showed you will be ready so that'll make a nice meal for one night this coming week. We've tidied up the garlic bed and we've put some spring onions in just in a patch there. We've left the kale to go to flour because uh, our chickens like to eat that so we don't mind leaving that in just for a little bit longer. Just planted some more potatoes today, some second early charlottes and I'm just about to cover up the last row and as you can see I've dug a nice trench there, not perfectly straight but good enough for me. I've got 11 potatoes in there and this is the fourth row that I planted now so that will be 44 spuds that I will expect to harvest maybe in two, two and a half months time. The Winston potatoes that I planted oh, about a month ago now actually on the 16th of March when it was still quite cool in fact but They've actually just started to come through now, and if we just come across here, I've counted about 11 that have come through now. And if we just have a look at this one here, that one's come through the most. And because we're still expecting, you know, a few chilly nights, I might just earth these up a bit because we don't want these tender leaves to get uh, scorched by any frost. Most potatoes will survive after a fr after frost damage, but it does slow down their progress, so that's another job to do before we leave today. In the week I rotivated over this patch again where we've had the bonfire and mixed in all the potash and all the wood ash, which uh, brassicas will love. It's a good soil improver for anything that, like brassicas, you know, your cabbages, your kales and all sorts like that. Just planted some more broad beans that we started off at home. So we'll have a nice crop of broad beans there later in the year. The two rows of parsnips that we put in Oh, quite a while ago now, they've just started. It's hard to pick out where they've come through, so I'll have to feature those again on a future video when they get a bit bigger. But I can promise you there are some parsnips in there. And this apple tree that I featured a couple of months ago, the Woodbrook Pippin, has uh, settled in well on our allotment and it's even got some lovely blossoms coming on there so we might even get an apple or two this year the Cox's Orange Pippins that we've had on our plot now for ooh, three years now that I pruned in the winter that's absolutely full of blossom producing buds there so hopefully we'll get a decent crop off those this year. The spinach that we put in and the chard, well we moved it actually because it was in the way of where some other crops were going in this year, they've taken really well. I'm expecting to uh, have quite a few meals from the spinach there. It's lovely in rice. Finally managed to finish the pallet fence, giving it a coat of wood stain as well. Still got a big pile of pallets there, which I'm hoping to uh, continue the, the fence uh, rebuilding. 
but uh, as planting's more important, planting time's more important, I'll have to put that on hold for a week or two just yet. And at this end of the plot, up by the shed, I've used a large pallet as a cane store, and I made another pallet into mini planters so that we can grow herbs in pots because they're very shallow it's not worth filling those with soil we've decided we'll uh, put pots of herbs in there day two of a busy weekend on the allotment as you can see we've uh, completely weeded out the Victoria rhubarb patch and hopefully I'm going to get some extra thick weed suppressants so that we can cover this area up um, so the weeds don't pop through again. Uh, I've earthed up the Winston potatoes now that they're starting to come through so just in case we still get some cool nights they're well protected under an extra covering of soil. Also weeded a bit on the other rhubarb bed although it's a bit difficult now because they've uh, grown rather large in the last week and we've already harvested a few stalks so we can have them in a in a pie or something later tonight and I've just finished digging out and weeding this patch here all except for some carrots left in the centre there they uh, haven't done well they've done really well but they've really gone a bit to seed now they have been in since last year but this patch is going to be used for my cara main crop potatoes which I'm planning to put in at the end of this month as you can probably see the carrots if I zoom in have gone a little bit hairy so they're not really suitable for eating now I think lots of the flavor will have gone out of them so that's why we, I'm going to dig them all out, but they'll go in the compost bin so they won't go to waste. Also planted out some shallot onions. They've been, started those off in cells at home until they've got these nice uh, leaf growth starting on them. And they've got good root systems as well. It's a good idea to start them in, in, at home in a warm environment. And as you can see, we've planted out, I think it's 24 of those. So, good crop of shallots. And the first harvest of 2014, some lovely fresh rhubarb and a few spring onions, which I dug up from where I weeded for the potatoes. Lovely. Another weeding job done today is uh, these cabbages under the netting. Obviously we have to net all our brassicas because of the pigeons and the pheasants that we have on our site. So at least that's uh, been cleared now. And all the weeds that we've dug out today are on my drying rack which is a metal mesh uh, laid on two breeze blocks so that there's a gap underneath. Two, two reasons for that. The weeds will dry out quicker if they've got a, an airspace around them. Any soil left on them as they dry should fall through the bottom and it stops hedgehogs and uh, other animals uh, taking home in the bottom of your weed pile. And of course, where do the weeds go? In the incinerator bin. Normally I will have a big bonfire for weeds but because most of the ground is now taken up we haven't got enough space for a proper big bonfire so now we do a control burn in the incinerator bin so that's the allotment video for this weekend I think you'll agree we've had a fantastic weekend's work done lots of uh, weeding and planting gone on there so, on to the next task. Bye for now.